James, we're here in your final assembly hangar at Titterfield Air Park, looking at the high wing in the background, the new prototype from Sling. And it's all, of course, about this gorgeous Rotex 915 IS motor, which, of course, powers the um, Sling TSI low wing, as well as the high wings that's in the background of this image that we're showing. Can you tell me a little bit more about the progression and the development of this Rotax engine and how it affected Sling? Yeah. We know this motor well in the context of our Sling 4 TSI aeroplane, which was designed on the back of this engine. You know, um, Sling started out with an LSA and two-seat aircraft, and we then designed on the back of that a four-seat aircraft using a Rotax 914 engine, which was a 115 horsepower turbocharged little carburetor Rotax motor. And the Sling 4 was an effective but lightweight four-seat aeroplane. Um, it did a whole lot of what we needed it to do in terms of the mission, but um, it didn't have the speed and lifting capacity that we wanted. So, um, we came to know this engine in the context of the development of our Sling 4 TSI aeroplane. And often airframes are designed around <coughs> engines um, that are available um, in, in, at a time and place. And the Sling 4 TSI was a developmental project out of the Sling 4, which used a 914 115 horsepower engine. When Rotex came up with this engine, you know, I think it was in about early 2017, they started making them available. We realized that with 141 horsepower, instead of the 115 horsepower which had previously been available to us, in much the same size and weight. And that created an opportunity for us to turn our four-seater aircraft into the high-performance, high-lift machine that we wanted. So what we did is we made the wing a little bit smaller, we changed the aerofoil, increased the volume of the tail, and made some other essentially cosmetic changes. And we ended up with an aircraft, the Sling 4 TSI, that was a 145 knot true airspeed, um, 950 kilogram maximum all up weight um, aircraft that had absolutely beautiful handling characteristics feature of all of our kind of aeroplanes and I suppose we got to know this engine really well in the context of developing that airframe to fit it perfectly. The way life is you know you always learn things just after you needed to know them which often happens that way and so in the process of getting to know the engine and how it uh, engages with our TSI um, airframe, the opportunity to produce an absolutely optimal high wing version of the Sling 4 TSI kind of became obvious to us. Um, everybody asks us why a high wing airplane? And you know, there's a kind of debate out there. Um, the reasons are often disputed, but you see better out of a high wing airplane. Um, I think one of the real benefits is that you get in and out of a high-wing airplane like you get in and out of a motor car, you know, it's easy. So for people who are older um, and not able to jump onto a wing, it's much better. It's great for filming out of the door and use it for a little bit of skydiving and so on. And then obviously for clearing trees and things on the side of, um, of runways, a high-wing airplane has real benefits. So the Sling 4 High Wing Ethel is a development, developmental project which comes out of the Sling 4 TSI. In the Sling 4 TSI, we developed an aeroplane that did absolutely everything that we wanted it to do. And it created an opportunity, I suppose. The Sling 4 TSI is a beautiful combination of engine and airframe. And it was made possible, really, by the introduction by Rotex of this 141 horsepower 915 engine, 
which is a truly modern aviation engine. You know, it's a fuel injected, highly efficient, powerful, very light engine. So a lot has happened in the world in the last 50 years, and a Cessna 172, 182 is a generation of airplanes that essentially come out of the 60s and 70s. This motor over here is a totally different generation of engine. It produces high horsepower at incredible fuel efficiencies, um, up to high altitudes, and is very, very light. So we are able to build today, in 2021, um, and to develop an aeroplane that does 90% of a certain class of the things that a Cessna 172 and 182 do, 180% of a different class of things that those aircraft do, much more efficiently, much more comfortably, in a much more modern fashion. Okay, so I'm going to start with the fact that we wanted to use as much of this thing for TSI as we could, because we knew that the aeroplane performed so well. The wing is the same wing, it's a Narka 2414, and it's the same sizing. The tail from rear bulkhead backwards is essentially the same as the Sling 4 TSI. Actually, the shape is slightly different, but the construction is the same. I'll talk about the impenage in a minute. Firewall forward, we've got a tried and tested solution. Everything exactly the same. Same propeller and, of course, the same motor. What we had to do was we had to deal with the challenge of carrying the structure from the wing, which carries the load, down into the position of the load, which is in the seats and the baggage compartment. And if we went with an aluminium solution, we knew that it would take a lot of weight and of course a lot of volume in structure because a semi-monocoque structure requires volume. So early on in the process, we decided to go with a composite center fuselage with the aircraft because we could make it light and very, very strong and stiff. We wanted a strutless wing because we wanted to, the aeroplane to look beautiful, but we also wanted to be able to see outside without the constraint of a strut. It also improves access and entry into the aeroplane. So we have, through a number of rounds of testing, come up with a mixed composite construct of carbon and glass, and we're able to get with that a reasonably thin-walled, very strong, very stiff, center fuselage to carry the loads from the weight in the seats and baggage compartment up into the center spot. So James, you've done a lot of test flying on this high wing aeroplane. Mm. Tell me please, how does she fly? So I thought every aeroplane is a compromise. It can't go fast and carry a heavy load and land short and be light and be strong and so on. I always say that the one quality about sling aircraft that is absolutely uncompromised is the handling qualities. Our aeroplanes fly absolutely beautifully. We wanted to achieve that with the high wing and I think we are 98% there. If I'm to be 100% honest with you, we are still in a developmental and prototyping phase. So there are some small changes that we want to make to give it absolutely the perfect, mil-spec, pleasurable qualities that every sling aircraft should have. We're 98% there, we've got 2% to go. When you come and talk to me again in one month, it's going to be 100% sling. And I suppose, you know, in simple terms, what that means is a responsive, stable, and pleasurable platform to fly. So, I mean, I think uh, a lot of people know that we've been very successful with the Sling 2 and the Sling LSA in the training market. It's a, those are low-wing um, uh, two-seater slings that we entered the market with 10 years ago. Um, they are more simple aircraft. They are cheaper to acquire, cheaper to maintain. They're very easy to fly, real stick and rudder um, planes. Um, and the, the Sling High Wing is a major step up from that. It's a more complex aeroplane. It has a constant speed propeller and a turbocharger, for example, but still very simple to fly. Uh, unlike legacy 1960s and 70s 
aircraft like the Cessna 182 or 172. Um, this has got an incredibly simple electric constant speed propeller, a simple knob on the dashboard to turn three different spots, take off, cruise, climb and cruise. Um, and then um, the, the kind of natural progression in the trading market, I guess, would be to start off on a simple, easy to fly Sling 2 and then move on to the more complex machine, which in the case of our aircraft is no more complex to fly, it's just considered to be a more complex aircraft because of things like the turbocharger and the constant speed propeller. I think other advantages are sort of developments in uh, materials and technology over the years. You know, this is an aircraft that for the first time ever we've made the center fuselage out of composites, a combination of fiberglass and carbon, which is incredibly strong. And so we've managed to make an aircraft as big as, if not bigger than a 182, much lighter and much stronger than a 182. So uh, another advantage that we definitely have is that we use the modern Rotax 915 IS engine, um, an engine that creates an incredible power to weight ratio over legacy engines built in the 60s and 70s. Um, it allows us to fly at a uh, cruising speed similar to those larger, thirstier engines while burning half the fuel. We, of course, have experience of this engine. This is not a first time for us because this is the same engine that we use on our low-wing sling TSI. We've developed that engine over the last three years and tweaked it to perform absolutely perfectly. And so this step up is just a step to a different airframe, which satisfies a different consumer base. The low-wing versus high-wing, I feel, is a bit like sports car versus 4x4, although not directly translated. We have added to our range of aircraft. We used to sell small aeroplanes, slightly bigger aeroplanes. We now sell a completely different category of aeroplane that satisfies a market that otherwise wouldn't get into a low wing. You know, they say that if it looks good, it flies well. And so I think there's no question that this aircraft flies well. Um, my name's Bertus. Um, I'm the sales manager for Sling. I've been here for about three years now. Um, I am Aina, I work for Sling Aircraft. I was the lead draftsman on the Irving project and I've been working for Sling now for almost five years. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm the chief engineer at Sling Aircraft. I've been working here for five years now. Ethel, so the wingspan of the aircraft is 9.5 meters. Um, the length of it is 7.2 meters um, with 2.4 meters and the cabin interior with is uh, 1.2 meters rounded off. Um, the maximum all up weight is 1,050 kilograms. The standard empty weight will be 580 kilograms, and the useful load is 470 kilograms. Um, the takeoff distance over a 50 feet obstacle is 550 meters. Yes, as well. So, rotate speed is 45 knots, um, landing speed. Approaching over the fence is about 70 knots um, indicated. Um, the VNE of the aircraft is 155 knots indicated, um, and then with a, a kind of economical cruise, um, we'll be at about 145 knots through airspeed. Um, with that kind of engine setup, you'll fly and burn about 28 liters of uh, no gas an hour. Um, so, quite an economical aircraft. Um, I'm the chief test pilot here as well as the licensed AP and I sort of oversaw the project towards the end. Um, it's quite interesting though that uh, when the engineers run out of ideas, I think us APs come forward and make things fly. I fly all of these new aircraft out of final assembly and I was privileged enough to get to oversee the final parts of this high wing aircraft and get it to fly really, really well. Um, from the onset of the first flight to where we, we deemed it satisfactory, we managed to get it flying to that state in about seven days. So um, um, there are some really finer points that we need to iron out now, but by and large now it is now really flying beautifully. And um, um, we are currently conducting demonstration flights with it now. We, while conducting demonstrations, they more of uh, putting the aircraft out there for various other people to give us, gauge us a feeler back on the aircraft to actually make the decision whether we finally finished with the design. Uh, so we've invited various high-time high-wing instructors and various other flight schools to come and conduct a demonstration flight to give us positive feedback or negative feedback, should it be. Luckily thus far, it's all been positive feedback with some rather big names that have flown the aircraft already.
Yeah, hugely. Um, I've been responsible for all the around the world trips as the AP and the final inspector. So I put a lot of effort into trying to get this aeroplane ready. I sat many, many nights planning the route with James and you know whether we would have enough fuel because the Cape Verde to Barbados is a long leg. It's 26 hours about. You know, with no wind. Um, there's always wind in that thing. I was hugely disappointed. We've already plumbed and modified this airframe you know, for that trip, that crossing. So we were, I was really quite disheartened. I was really looking forward to actually seeing this airplane depart for the fourth time to Oshkosh. Yeah, it's quite sad. I mean, we're doing a lot of uh, real-time videos and we're sending across there as much as we can. I mean, it, it was just left a little bit too late. There was talk of dismantling the aircraft and air freighting it across there, that they could reassemble it. It was just deemed not, just not going to work in time. Um, so we do a lot of live streaming videos from inside the cockpit, and people that want to really see it, we'll do some more flying stuff during the course, but there is a lot of marketing material out there. I mean, as you well know, the sales on the aircraft have been phenomenal. I think it's in excess of 45 aircraft are already sold. So it was very important for us to get it to Oshkosh. But with our great supporters in America, I'm sure they'll be patient until next year or later on this year. Uh, if you look at the highway, I don't have much, much time. And prior to flying this particular highway, I need a couple of hundred hours on, on highway aircraft as such. Um, so uh, there was a couple of characteristics that were unusual for me, but now that I've been flying for a couple of hundred hours again, I've, I've got over the wow factor and settling down with the airplane as I should when I'm demonstrating it. And um, the main thing for me is the takeoff distance. That's the only difference. The in-flight characteristics for me are pretty much the, the same as the TSR in-flight. Well, they do essentially have the same wing. There's just less dihedral on the particular highway. For me, it's come down to somebody also, what is my preference for the aircraft? I'm going to say whichever one's in front of the hangar at this stage. I know these uh, slings like intimately well. I've over 10,000 hours on sling aircraft now. I'm also a uh, helicopter pilot, micro flight instructor, and I regard test flying as a as a responsibility rather than a privilege. This particular hiring, I think I've done a, a, a well over 150 hours of, uh, of most of the flying time on the aircraft, with uh, I think James following a close second and Mike right at the back, if he hasn't flown it that much as I definitely, Mike hasn't flown the tail dragger version of this highwing yet. A feature of all sling aircraft is that they handle absolutely beautifully. And the handling was an element of the performance of the Sling 4 TSI that we wanted to see perfectly replicated in the Sling Highland.